want to spend my life mending broken people. I want to spend my life removing pain. Lord, let my words heal a heart. That hurts. I want to spend my life mending broken people. I want to spend my life mending broken people. Hello, friends, and welcome to 3ABN Today. I'm John Lomakang, and thank you for taking the time to tune in. Uh, if you are a first-timer, pay particular attention to this network. We believe that the Lord has ordained us to share the good news of Jesus Christ, along with a plethora of different types of programmings. And today is one great example of the diversity of this network, as we have a program today about hypertension, diabetes, and heart disease. And that's a concern worldwide. Our guest today is going to walk us through some of the natural remedies that we can participate in because everyone wants to reduce health costs and have that kind of abundant life that Jesus has come to offer. And so thank you for taking the time. Also, if you're a part of our 3ABN family, thank you for your prayers and your financial support of this network as we continue going and growing, getting ready for the coming of Jesus. Right now, let us uh, meet our guest today, uh, Dr. Enoch Sundaram. So good to have you here. Nice to be here, sir. <laughs> yes, I have, I have seen studies, medical studies. I'm obviously not a physician, I'm more of a pastor. But uh, I know that these issues, diabetes, heart disease, and hypertension are a great concern in the world. And, but before we get into that, tell our listening and viewing audience uh, a little about your background, who you are, where you're from, and what you do right now. Okay, uh, I'm from the uh, southern part of India. Okay. And uh, me and my wife, we are running a small hospital and lifestyle center in a place called Nagar Koil, okay. which is in the southern tip of India. And um, we, ha we do have a lifestyle program for various diseases. And the most common kind of uh, disease that we treat is diabetes, hypertension, and heart disease. Okay. Yes, sir. And so you are married because you mentioned your wife. Yeah. Any children? <laughs> yeah, I have two children. Okay. Uh, two sons. My eldest son is about 15 years and youngest son is 11 years old. Wonderful. Now, I've been to India before. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. country, a lot of people, a lot of motorcycles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I've enjoyed being in different parts of India. But now, let's l kind of dive right into the program okay. and, and just talk about these concerns because people watching the program or maybe they're listening in their car or, mm -hmm. or from maybe on their radio or whatever means they're using. Mm -hmm. uh, people today, mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, in lifestyle practices, uh, diabetes, heart disease, and hypertension are very much a real issue in society today. True. What are some of the causes of these? Let's start with diabetes, for example. Yeah. Now, as you know, India is the diabetic capital of the world. We have a lot of diabetes patients in India. Hmm. And uh, one of the major reasons for diabetes is um, refined food. When hmm. I say refined food, is basically like the southern part of India, we eat a lot of rice. Oh, and the yeah. northern side of India, generally, there is, they eat more of wheat. Hmm. Now, what has happened is, uh, in earlier days, um, we used to have hand pound rice. Hmm. So we don't refine our grains, and uh, I mean that's what you call as brown rice here, and we call it hand pound rice in India. Oh, okay, hand pounded. Yeah, okay. hand pound rice. So now in a hand pound rice, you have all the nutrients you need, hmm. and one of the very important nutrients uh, you need uh, for metabolism is uh, chromium. You know, chromium is an important raw material to produce insulin. And you have your chromium on only on in the brown rice, but when you refine it, then you don't have your chromium. 
And so... So in other words, when you, if you eat white, white rice... That's right. Or white uh, rice that had been bleached or when you say refined, yeah. That's right, yeah. It, it, nowadays, you, you know, the, 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 the fiber on top of the rice is taken away mm. and it is refined. And so you just have the white rice and the white rice doesn't have all the nutrients. Mm. So, which means your, your pancreas miss out on certain nutrients for it to produce insulin. Oh, so okay. that's one of the major reason why people uh, get diabetes. Mm. And uh, the same goes with wheat. And when you refine the wheat and, and you remove the husk and then you don't have these micronutrients that your body needs. Mm. So this is one of the major reasons why people get diabetes. And number two is, um, you know, in India we used to have uh, more of a vegetarian kind of diet. But recently people are changing their diet and lifestyle and they're adopting more to meat eating. Mm. Now, uh, traditionally we are not like that. Uh, usually our people, we used to have uh, meat uh, once in a while, like when there is a festival or some mm. good occasion. Special occasion. Special occasion, that's right. But nowadays it's not like that. You know, people start to eat more meat. Now, there are a lot of studies that says that uh, meat is one of a very important cause for diabetes because mm. it blocks the receptors where the insulin uh, does its function. So, so when so you eat meat, the receptors where you know, that will draw in the insulin is right. pretty much cut off, Locked. shut down, yeah. blocked. And that's what we call as insulin resistance. Mm. So this is another very important reason why people get diabetes. So the refined food um, and then uh, the animal food, which is very high in saturated fat. And the third thing is lack of exercise. You know, oh, okay. generally our people, they don't exercise much. They don't have that uh, health seeking behavior. Uh, so that these are the major reason for diabetes and also there are studies that has come up telling that uh, coffee and tea increases the insulin resistance because caffeine is in it hmm. so our people how does caffeine do that because I, I know there are some people you know caffeine is such a um, it's such a common drink it's in you know coke and pepsi mm -hmm. and mountain dew True. and a lot of things that people coffee yeah uh, and, and for some people, that's just a part of their, you know, part of their diet. They'll eat a sandwich and drink Dr. Pepper. Mm -hmm. How does caffeine affect the body's ability to, to draw in what it needs? Yeah, one is uh, it, it increases the insulin resistance. Um, it becomes very difficult for the uh, insulin to does its, does its function. Mm -hmm. um, maybe, m let me explain like this. In a normal person, mm -hmm. uh, he may need just uh, maybe one drop of insulin. Hmm. But uh, when people have high insulin resistance, they may need five drops of insulin. Hmm. So uh, this condition comes because of uh, drinking coffee and tea also. It increases the insulin resistance. Hmm. The insulin receptor are on the uh, cell wall. So when you take more tea and coffee, the resistance increases, which means um, one side, your body has to produce more insulin mm. to handle the situation. So wow. a, a time comes where your body says, I cannot <coughs> produce any more insulin. Mm. So and then you have to take the insulin shots or? Or, or uh, uh, oral hypoglycemic drugs, so to handle the situation. So then it's not, in many cases, the diabetes that you're talking about, because I know there are different types of diabetes. That's true. You know, um, I'm not a Type doctor. 1 and type 2? Type 1 and type 2. That's right. Which one is the more hereditary one? Um, the hereditary one is a type 2. Right. Uh, and that's what uh, we see commonly found in uh, any kind of population. Okay. And type 1 is, uh, incidence is much less. Yeah, more, more caused type of diabetes. True. By, by lifestyle practice, refined foods, meat, and lack of exercise. That's right, and tea, coffee. And tea and coffee. And of course, smoking and alcohol also has an impact. So when you eat a, when you eat a good meal, yeah. you know, for example, people sit down, they have a good meal, it's, it's, we shouldn't just base our meals on the way it tastes. True. We True. should base it on what's on the plate. That's right. You know, like for example, you know, if we go, we have a very expensive car, we take it to the gas station, and we put fuel into it, it's amazing how we're very particular about what kind of fuel we put in our That's car. Right. That's you know, right. The manufacturer says uh, premium only or unleaded only or, well, everything is unleaded nowadays, but 
they might say high octane and we stick closely to that because we want our cars to work well. True, true. But why is it that people don't pay attention to their bodies? Yeah, that is true, sir. This is uh, one side of the story, but I like to tell you the other side of the story yes. also. Now, um, generally we as uh, people, we have no knowledge and information what happens to the food before it reaches our plate. Mm. Yeah, so that awareness and that knowledge people have to know. Now let me explain. Uh, for example, now generally uh, I know in the States people like bread. And right. if you see, if I say 90% of the bread is made of white flour, will I be right? Pretty much. Yeah, so most of the bread are made with white flour. But people don't know how do you get white flour. White flour comes from wheat. And how do they make uh, white flour? They have to use a chemical called aloxone. Hmm. Now this aloxone chemical is so dangerous that uh, it's one of the cause for diabetes and also uh, it is nephrotoxic in nature. So um, when you keep uh, taking food that is made with white flour okay. and you have, the con you have to face the consequences because of the chemicals that are added in it. So there are so many things that happens to our food mm -hmm. before it reaches the table. Like now I just told you about how food is being processed. Mm -hmm. Now let's go a little further. Now the method of um, uh, farming or agriculture practices. Now today there are so many chemicals that are sprayed on our food. And mm. these chemicals also have a great impact on our body. So we have not uh, learned to give much attention to all these things. But and, and no, that itself, uh, if you see today, why we have such a high incidence of this disease, because our uh, agriculture practice has changed, uh, the way we process our food has changed because mm -hmm. we add a lot of chemicals, we refine it and so many things. And unless and until uh, we understand these things and make changes in these things, um, we cannot enjoy good health. Okay, so you have, to, you have to look at the entire chain of where's my food coming from? Exactly. How is it processed? That's how is right. it made? Uh, what about, you know, there's sometimes you'll buy bread in the store. That's right. And uh, it'll say um, enriched, wheat enriched. Um, I've, I've looked at that before and what, what actually that means is some mm -hmm. cases, excuse me, some cases the flour was, the, the wheat was bleached and mm -hmm. they put some wheat back into it. Okay. And that, but still, if you look at the whole process, it's far from the natural, from the way that it began. Am I sure. saying it correctly? That's right, sir. That's right. Yeah. See, uh, what I believe is God has put a design. And right. as much as possible, we should go by that design. We may not understand all the information or the knowledge in it, but the best would be to go by the design God has put in nature. Oh. So, but when you try to remove certain things for certain reasons, maybe taste or for the softness, and then you want to add certain nutrients, I mean, that's <laughs> not the right way to move forward. Right, you're offsetting the balance and you're trying to reset it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if, for example, what about refined foods like mm -hmm. Cakes and pies, uh, does that have any part to play on? Certainly, the certainly. Okay. Now, I mean, that should have been first in my list. Thank <laughs> you for reminding me about that. Yeah, sugar is a big problem today. Now, um, generally, you know, when I go to restaurants, you know, I like to watch uh, certain things. In India, if you see people, uh, they order a soft drink and then they like to uh, order different kinds of meat food and then they like to have another juice or uh, a dessert which has a lot of sugar, and then again a sweet. I mean, <laughs> Fermented. I can't imagine how much of sugar they're loading in our body, mm. in their bodies. Now, when you take a lot of sugar, now you're demanding your pancreas to work more than it has to, it can work in a day. Mm. So which means over a period of time, you're, you're exhausting the resources of your body. So your pancreas says, see, I have all worked for you for the past 35 years, and now I cannot do as how I've been working for you in the past. Mm, never thought about that. And so he says, okay, I'm giving you diabetes now. 
at least now you realize that you have made me work more and now try to give me a little break now. Right. So, so it's, it's basically a reminder from the body telling that, you know. So when the pancreas stops working, it's because you've overtaxed it. That's right. You've demanded it to put out more than it naturally should. That's right. And all of a sudden it gets to the place of exhaustion and it's worn out. That's right. And then now you have to start trying to use supplemental drugs to take the place of the natural function of the pancreas. Yeah. Now, yeah. drugs actually, they, are not, they don't work like supplement, basically. What they do is, um, when a person is diagnosed as uh, to be a diabetic, he has only 50% of the function, 50% uh, of the pancreas functioning. Wow. So, what we do is, when we give uh, medications or hypoglycemic drugs, we are basically telling the pancreas, you better work as how you were working before. Hmm. So we are kind of pushing the pancreas to work more. And so the pancreas said, okay, I will do it. And as we give these drugs, the 50% function comes to 40% oh. and 30%. So basically, because we are making the pancreas to do a double work, mm -hmm. and so it does, but a point comes where we call beta cell apoptosis. Beta cell is a cell that produces insulin in the pancreas. Mm. And so since we made this beta cell to work more, they again get exhausted and the percentage of beta cell comes down. Okay. And then we say, okay, now go for insulin. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna put it in layman's term for those yeah. who are listening to the program. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you think of an athlete yeah. who's in excellent shape and you work him and work him and work him and he says, I'm getting tired. Mm -hmm. Uh, I only have 50% of my energy left. Yeah. And you say, well, we're going to give you drugs to make you work even harder. Well, the, he doesn't get 60 or 70 or 80%. You're taking that 50% and reducing it to 40 to 30 to 20 until he drops from exhaustion. That's right. And then he can't, nothing could stimulate him to get back up. That is right. So that's what happens to our pancreas. Exactly. When, right. we, when we overtax it with refined flours, uh, meats, alcohol, sugar, caffeine, That's right. all these things that demand the production of insulin. That's right, sir. Wow. Very true. You don't very think true. about that very much. You know, when yeah. you go to a restaurant, especially in America or in places of the world, we usually tend to eat based on what we like to taste. That's right. And they always say, do you have room for dessert? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> very true. Okay. Very true. So, so then that leads now from diabetes, then does it now lead to Let's bring hypertension into the picture now. Okay, okay. Yeah, so hypertension again is uh, becoming a very serious problem these days. And uh, there are various reasons for hypertension. Now, one of the major causes for hypertension also is uh, the, the, the saturated fat, animal food, and tea and coffee, and uh, you know, the refined food. They all have a role, definitely they have right. a role. Now, uh, if you take hypertension, now, why does the blood pressure increase us? Hmm. You know, we have the arteries. When the arteries, they, they, they constrict. You know, arteries have uh, an ability to dilate and constrict. Okay, That's so they're flexible. Yeah, flexible. We say vasodilatation, vasoconstriction. Hmm. Now, there are certain nutrients that uh, uh, allows the arteries to constrict. There are certain nutrients that allows arteries to dilate. Hmm. So, when you take more sodium, uh, it generally dilates, uh, constricts, I'm sorry. When you take more sodium, it constricts. Mm, like, very, like people that eat a lot of salt. Exactly. Potato exactly. chips, all this refined stuff that that's tastes, true. tastes good. That's true. But it's just pouring sodium into your body. That's right. And it makes the, it, it keeps the vessels from expanding. Correct, sir. Okay, I'm, I'm following Correct. you. I'm Correct. trying to learn something because, you know, potato chips, <laughs> Sometimes I like potato chips, True. and I'm also an athlete. So. I don't want to restrict my arteries from working the way that I, I, it should work. True. Okay. So that's one. Uh, but when you uh, take food that is um, high in magnesium and potassium, mm. it dilates the artery. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I had an experience with um, uh, a software engineer who was uh, CEO of a company. Uh, he was a young man and he was taking four drugs for hypertension. Four? Four drugs. And then he came to me and then I was giving uh, him a diet which was high in magnesium and potassium, which is more green leafy vegetables right. and bananas. Um, and then he was wondering, you know, I've come for treatment. What is this doctor doing with me, giving <laughs> me just green leafy vegetables and bananas? I said, just take it. 
and um, after a couple of uh, days he saw his uh, blood pressure was dropping and then I had to take away some of the drugs um, of him and then he was feeling better he was surprised you know people become so surprised how simple changes in their diet and lifestyle mm. can make such a big impact wow and uh, so just by changing your diet mm. by eating more uh, food that is high in magnesium and you find this in green leafy vegetables mm -hmm. and uh, when you take more green leafy vegetables in your diet more salads more greens and uh, more fruits that has potassium and your blood pressure is going to drop. But there's a caution here. Now, these advices doesn't apply to everybody. Right. For example, people who have hypertension and also their kidneys are affected, they should not take this advice. Oh, okay. Because uh, if the kidneys are uh, affected, then uh, you know they cannot handle potassium. So if they take more potassium, then they will be in trouble. Okay, so people, for example, that are on dialysis. Yeah. Okay, the, yeah. the kidneys are challenged. Yeah. They should not. And the reason that came to my mind is because mm -hmm. my sister, uh, she's a survivor of the World Trade Center in New York. Okay. She's a firefighter, retired mm -hmm. now, but she lost the function of one of her kidneys. Okay. And they said, well, you, now that you have a new kidney, be very light on potassium. That's right. Okay, so that's right. what does it do? What does yeah. it, how does it affect? Now, th that's the reason. Whatever advice we give here, now, people should not get um, uh, very uh, emotional and say, okay, I'm going to do this right <laughs> okay. away and stop all medicines. Right. That is the greatest blunder they will do in their life. Dangerous. You, very dangerous. You cannot stop your medicines. You cannot abruptly stop what you're doing. No. You have to work with your doctor. Now, whatever information they get from this program, mm. uh, they have to start thinking on it, making a plan. They need to discuss with their physician and right. say, doctor, I'm very serious about bringing some lifestyle change. And then would you help me tapering the drugs off? So the, it is the physician who has to do that. Right. Yeah. Guiding them through the safe way. Exactly. They have to discuss with the physician. So um, as I said, uh, if you're just hypertension, uh, you, if you're just suffering from hypertension, then a diet with uh, potassium and magnesium will help. But if, a high, if you have a kidney problem, then no, you cannot go for that. Right. You have to, there are other ways of handling that. So uh, one reason for hypertension is uh, this, and the second one is clogged arteries. Hmm. Yeah, when the arteries are clogged, and then the more pressure is required for the blood to flow through the arteries. So generally for those patients, what we do is um, we give them uh, ginger and garlic. Mm. It's an excellent artery cleanser with a little bit of cayenne. And uh, in fact, we make a, a, a tea. You mean with a cayenne? Yeah, that's okay, right. Ginger, garlic, and a little and bit of cayenne. And lime. And lime. That's true. You know, my wife makes a ginger. Uh -huh. She gets the natural ginger, Okay. boils it, Okay. and she puts a little lemon in it, mm -hmm. lime, mm -hmm. and uh, as a singer and a person who uses his voice a lot, I mm -hmm. do. I, that's my favorite drink. Okay. But also, it helps, as you're saying, then it helps with blood pressure. True, true. Okay. Yeah. How it helps is by clearing the arteries. Mm. So generally, um, we tell people to take it three months and then leave it, not to continue it. Because if you just take three months and the arteries get cleared. And for some people, we have to add few other herbs that helps to clear the arteries. But ginger, garlic, cayenne, and lime takes care of it. Okay, but ginger, we don't garlic, cayenne, and lime. Lime. Like that. And we, we don't heat it, just raw. It has to be made fresh every morning. Yes. And uh, we tell them to drink. And we have seen excellent results with that, arteries being cleared and blood pressure coming down. So uh, first is I told you about uh, the changes in diet, more of magnesium potassium. The second is clearing the arteries. Mm -hmm. And the third part is um, what happens is some people, mm, because of high sodium diet, the blood volume increases. Mm -hmm. Let me explain. Now, generally, the capacity of uh, blood that our heart and blood vessels can hold is about five liters of blood. Mm, about five liters. Yeah. Okay. But when you take a, a lot of salt, uh, the blood draws the water and keeps with it. So the volume increases. So you the start blood, you the blood volume increases. Oh, so you start having more blood. Uh, not more blood. Uh, more water in it. Yeah, more water in the blood. Oh, okay. Uh, so 
uh, which means um, uh, this leads to high blood pressure. Oh, okay. So now you have to get rid of the water to reduce your blood pressure. So that's why, you know, generally physicians, they give diuretics. Now, so what we do is we give uh, natural diuretics, like for example, corn silk. Hmm. Um, corn silk. That's right. Okay. So we just take some corn silk, make a tea out of it and uh, give for patients and then you see the fluids coming out. Okay, I, I, so before you go any further, yeah. I'm gonna put this together in my head. Okay. Usually when you start getting more water in your blood, you have to find a way to dispense of the water. That's right. To get the water out of your system. That's because right. Because I think I'm, I'm, I'm putting a mental picture together here. Sure. It's like uh, taking a balloon mm -hmm. and you keep filling it up, yeah. filling it up, filling yeah. it up. You create a lot more pressure. That's right. You naturally create a lot more pressure. That is right. And so that's, that's right. synonymous with the blood pressure increasing, it becomes very sensitive. Yeah. That's why people could be on the border of having a stroke. That's uh, Because right. if your blood pressure gets too high. And so, true, true. and so what you're saying, because I wanna go back to the lifestyle center here, and we're gonna go come back to the, to the remedy for diabetes, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna talk about heart disease. Sure. One of the reasons, and I've been listening carefully, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is that you include, as a physician, mm -hmm. you tend to go more natural unless okay. medicine is imperative. True, yeah. true. Cause so pe a lot of people rather would just say, well, do doctor, give me a prescription, That's and true. they don't want to change their lifestyle. But what you're saying is the greater benefit is if you learn how to change the way you eat, the way you live, what you put in your body, yeah. then you tend to do it more naturally, and the, and the results are more long-lasting than taking a drug, yeah. unless uh, obviously it's necessary. Yeah. Now, if you see, um, generally as a physician, uh, we are trained more to take care of the patient from, okay, uh, you make a diagnosis of mm -hmm. hypertension and then you say, okay, you're hypertensive, these are the drugs you take. Hmm. You know, we are, made, uh, we are trained in that way and which is very good. Right. We need that training. It's very important training that we need. But the other side, uh, we don't, uh, we are not trained to look at it. Hmm. Like what has caused this? Okay. You know? And in more detail, of course, we, we, we do study a little bit on that, but we, have, we don't go into the depth of it. But thank God for the Bible. Hmm, okay. You know, if you see in the Bible, uh, whenever God uh, has chosen a group of people, He has chosen them to educate them as to how He has designed us and what is the kind of lifestyle He wants us to adopt. Now, the reason why he wants us to adopt a particular kind of lifestyle is mm. because he's a creator. Mm. He's a designer. That's right. And so he knows from the beginning to the end. So if you eat this, he knows what will happen. The result. If you have this lifestyle, what would happen? He knows everything. That's right. So through the Bible, he's educating us. Now, that's what he did to the Israelites. He said, right. okay, when he was bringing the Israelites out of Egypt, the first education he said is, okay, let me change your diet. Now, he had to change their taste buds, so he mm. gave them manna. And then after that, if you see, they wanted the meat. Right, the quail. And the quails. And God said, uh, no, that's not the best for you. Right. It's good for you to get into this kind of lifestyle. But they wouldn't listen. So they had to pay the consequence. Mm. Now, Paul talks about the same incident and he says that these things happen for our examples. Ah, First Corinthians 10. Yes, First Corinthians 10. So it applies to us also. And I thank God for this information because if you see the quality of meat has gone very bad these days. That's right. And the quality <clears throat> of milk, the quality of egg, everything has gone bad. And I'm amazed how God has put this information in the Bible. And uh, when we apply this kind of lifestyle, we reap the benefits. Hmm. So I started to explore the other side. Okay. Like, so, okay, why is the Bible saying this? Does it really work? Cause and effect. Cause and effect. Is it scientifically right? Now, I'm amazed to see the the, the, the research that is coming out uh, these days, lifestyle, lifestyle, and a lifestyle. Hmm. 
Hmm. So, and I see this same kind of lifestyle God is telling us to adopt. That's right. Yeah. Now, and also, I, uh, you know, I had a lot of questions when I came into medical practice as to if God is really loving, hmm. now why should people suffer from so many kind of diseases? You know, you know, when you're with patients all the time, seeing patients, you know, you yourself get sick and feel bad <laughs> how people are suffering from various <laughs> kinds of diseases. Hmm. So I had these questions. Then I started my search. Then I saw in the Bible it says in uh, John, um, uh, I think it's 3 John chapter 1, verse 2, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you be in good health. So then I learned what's in the mind of Christ. Mm. And then even if you see in um, Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 32, it says, God uh, he says that I have no pleasure in him that dieth. That's right. So I know God will not say lie. And I came to know that this is God's mindset, that he wants us to be in good health. And then John 10, 10. Yeah. Have life more abundantly. That's right. right. More abundantly, yeah. So that's very clear. Mm -hmm. Then the next point, then why diseases? Then we have that uh, information also in the Bible in Psalms chapter uh, 103 verse 3. It says, um, uh, he forgiveth thy sins and healeth thy disease. That's right. So there is a connection between sin and disease. Hmm. So sin and disease is closely connected. Okay. Now we have to explore in this area. What kind of sin causes what kind of disease? Hmm. And we have to explore. And as uh, Christians, we have this responsibility to explore into it and to help people. That's true. And that makes sense because everything has an effect. Yeah. Every cause mm -hmm. uh, is followed by an effect. Everything you do, mm -hmm. I think the phrase I learned in school, which we all learned, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. That's right. So we can't treat the body uh, haphazardly and callously and think that it's going to work perfectly fine. Yeah. So, and it makes a difference in our lifestyle. But, but so, so if you think of the society we live in today, society around us yeah. doesn't really live by those principles mm -hmm. because they pr pretty much force on us the, the uh, capitalistic approach. Yeah. You know, th they want to just make money so they don't really think about in yeah. many cases how we're supposed to eat. The other thing why people generally don't believe in these things is they say like, oh, it's genetical. My uh, father, my mother had diabetes <laughs> and you know, my parents had heart disease. So I will also have it. So I have to deal with it. No, that's not the way. Okay. Now, of course, yes, the Bible says in, um, if you see in um, Numbers chapter 14, verse 18, it says that the children suffer the consequences of the mistakes the father and the mother have done. Right. So that's why uh, there is a genetic predisposition. If the parents have diabetes, children definitely have a high chances of getting diabetes. Right. Because the choices they have made is not only going to affect them, it's going to affect the next generation. Right. So that puts a tremendous amount of responsibility on us. Okay, so, I'm glad you said that. Yeah, tremendous amount of responsibility. So because uh, whatever lifestyle practices that we have, it is recorded in our genes and we transmit to the next generation. So okay. it's a lot of responsibility on us. So that is true. The Bible says so. But also if you see in um, Exodus chapter 18 verse 9, it's a wonderful promise for all of us. It says, though you may have, you're born with this genetic weakness, don't worry. If you obey me and keep my law, you can live. Okay, so he's offering a remedy. Exactly. <clears throat> so now what's the remedy? Okay, he said, thank you, Lord. There is a plan for me. There is an escape. So what's the remedy? And even that we have it in the Bible. So you see Ezekiel 47 verse 12, it says, and the leaves of the tree are for healing of nations. Mm. So there is a clue there. There is a principle okay. God has given. So the leaves are for healing. And uh, let's go back to Genesis chapter 3 uh, verse 18, where right after sin, God is introducing another diet in man's life. Hmm. He's saying, eat the herb. Now, generally in our mindset, when you say herb, that means it's a medicinal plant. No. So herb is basically a non-woody plant. Hmm. 
Hmm. Say that again. A non-woody plant. Okay. So, which <coughs> means uh, it can be the root of the herb, it can be the produce, a product of the herb, it can be the herb itself, or it can be the flower of the herb. So basically, God introduced a, a, a vegetable diet. He told us to eat the vegetables after sin. Now, the reason why he's saying that is because we know that vegetables have um, healing properties. There are different kinds of leaves, green leafy vegetables, um, greens that have healing properties. Mm -hmm. And it's um, once I started to explore in these things how uh, these leaves have healing properties, I was amazed. Okay. Like for example, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, as I told you, Indians are more prone for diabetes. Now, in London, in a medical college, they did a research and they found out that uh, one of the common leaves that we use in our country, it's called curry leaves. Yes, yeah. Curry leaves. And if you just take a handful of curry leaves, uh, your chances of becoming diabetic drastically comes down. They have done mm. a study. Now, now we see the reason why God has introduced all these things in our lifestyle. Now, I like curry. Yeah. And it's amazing that you mentioned that because it's very, uh, you know, it's a very common thing in the Indian society. True, true. So now let me ask this question. I'm going to kind of try, try to combine it together. Sure, sure. It doesn't mean that because you use curry, you could still ignore the impact of a heavy meat diet. It means you should still try to avoid those those other aspects that we talked about earlier. Yeah. Um, no, uh, curry is different, sir. Curry leaves are different. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank uh, you. Yeah, curry is basically where we add a lot of spices and make it. <laughs> but what I'm saying is about <laughs> curry leaves. Curry leaves, uh, it's, okay. It's a, it's, a, it's a leaf of a small tree and um, that is very beneficial for diabetes. So, How do you eat curry leaves? Uh, How do you include it? What I recommend is uh, to my patients to take a handful of curry leaves and just chew it. Hmm. And uh, in, our, in our Indian society, we make um, uh, a kind of uh, sauce with that, which we generally like to take with rice. Like chutney? Or? Yeah, chutney, that's right. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's yeah, I'm an Indian connoisseur, I love <laughs> Indian food. <laughs> <clears throat> but that's interesting because yeah. we have, so now going, going, going back to the diabetes, we talked yeah. about some of the ways of dealing with hypertension. Mm. We're going to go over to heart disease in a moment, yeah. but f if a person wants to start handling their diabetes, okay. are some of the things that helps in hypertension also true in helping in diabetes? Yeah, definitely. Now, coming back to diabetes, one of the most important thing that they have to do is have to make a good meal plan. Okay. Now, I can give two or three uh, good tips that can help in the diabetic control. Mm -hmm. Number one is um, you have to make a m good meal plan. That is, your breakfast has to be heavy, lunch has to be lighter than the breakfast, and dinner has to be very light. Okay. So, uh, you know, generally people come to me and say, Doctor, once I become a diabetic, I was stopped from taking fruits. Hmm. Then I said, don't worry you can have fruits, but fruits have to be a separate meal. So, okay. uh, so I tell my patients to take the fruits for dinner. And uh, they said, no doctor, if I take fruits, my sugar will go high. <laughs> I said, okay, no problem. You just take your fruits and see your fasting sugar. So they take the fruits and then they see the fasting sugar. Doctor, my sugar has not gone high. I say, yeah. Okay. But, but if you eat uh, uh, something else with your fruits, your sugar is going to go high. Oh, okay. Now, fruits is easy to digest, and uh, fruits has fructose, so you know you don't need insulin to metabolize that. So it's good to have fruits as dinner because it's much lighter and e it gets easily digested. So the meal plan has to be in place: breakfast heavy, lunch lighter, and dinner very light. Or if they can go on two meal, that's the best. But I don't advise two meal for people who are hardworking, like you know, who work, uh, does agricultural job or labor, right. physical labor. So they have to. I advise them to go on a three meal diet. But otherwise, uh, you know, if it's office work and sedentary lifestyle, two meal would be the best. Okay, because you're burning less fuel. That's right, sir. Oh. That's right. So that is uh, the first point. The second point is, um, don't take refined food. When I say refined food, I mean any food that's made with 
white rice or white flour. Okay. So what are the food that is made with white flour? The bread, the pastas, the noodles, all these things are made with white flour. What if you get spinach noodles? You know, they have some... Yeah, spinach, but have they made it with whole wheat? Okay, yeah, whole wheat. So the whole wheat should be that. that that's very important. Okay. Uh, so be careful about the, you know, ref, refined food and all those okay. things. The third thing is, it would be a good decision if somebody can uh, leave away the animal uh, food out products. of this, yeah, animal products out of their body. Wow. Now, if you're leaving the animal products, it's very, very important that you substitute by adequate nuts and uh, protein. That is uh, uh, protein from like uh, legumes. Okay. Know? So beans, you, yeah, beans. beans, yeah, that's very, very important. You have to substitute with that, otherwise uh, you can go weaker. So uh, if you can, they can talk with their doctor or um, you know a nutritionist where they they will advise what would be the best for them. You know, it's interesting you mentioned that because sometimes people say, well, I can't go without meat. Yeah. Uh, I have to have meat. Well, then you think of the cows who are huge animals, yeah, yeah. but they eat. Pretty, pretty much veg vegetation. True, true. And you look at some of the larger animals, the gorilla, mm -hmm. uh, even some of the larger creatures in the mm -hmm. seas mm -hmm. are primarily vegetarians. They don't eat meat. They don't have, they don't include that as a staple in their diet. True, true. So true. it's possible to get your proteins, your, and you mentioned something a moment ago I want to talk about. You said if you're going to eat fruits, don't combine it. Exactly. With, a, with, a, with what? Don't combine it with um, what? Like generally people like to have a bread and then a fruit or some rice and fruit. No, fruit oh. has to be separate. So separate digestion process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because one of them lengthens the process of digestion, the other one slows it down. Yeah, that is true. Oh, and okay. uh, also uh, you don't load your body with a lot of carbohydrates at the same time. Oh, carbs so, and fruits. Yeah, so it's good to have fruits uh, separately. And then the other thing is, uh, Diabetes patient, it would be nice if they could uh, get most of the nutrients from uh, legumes, mm -hmm. from fruits, from vegetables, and from nuts and seeds. Okay. And less from uh, grains like um, uh, wheat or rice or uh, oats. You know, okay. uh, take that less and more of vegetables, more of legumes. I get you. Now I want to I want to capitalize on before we get to uh, heart disease, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to talk about some of the, your medical center because it's called the AG okay. Hospital and Lifestyle Center. Mm -hmm. uh, what does AG stand for? Um, for us, it's Almighty God Hospital. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Almighty God. And why did you choose that name? Um, actually, my, uh, my father-in-law was running the hospital. Of course, okay. it, it has a family name. Uh, um, a meaning attached to it. It means Amal Nyana Sundaram. That's a family name. Okay. Um, yeah, that, uh, we ha it has a dual meaning uh, because it's a family hospital, mm -hmm. so it has that name, and also it also means to us Almighty God Hospital. Okay, mm -hmm. ordained and directed and kept alive, yeah. kept going by God. You have, uh, let's talk about some of the other treatments. You have, um, uh, you have medical missionary training included. Talk about yeah. some of the other components because not only do you focus on diabetes, uh, hypertension and heart disease cures in a natural way, but some of the other things that you uh, include and uh, are part of the AG Hospital and Lifestyle Center. Yeah, um, what we, as uh, I just mentioned to you, we have a treatment program for patients and when people come to us, uh, we take the history and we work up the case and mm -hmm we write treatment programs specifically that works for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have grown into this knowledge and we still have so much to grow in this knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, we have a research team that works and researches this material. And now what we want is we want to disseminate this information. Okay. So many can mm -hmm. benefit. So uh, that's why we have a, a training program where we train young people as to how we're handling these patients and how they can help you know, they can advise people mm -hmm. to follow this kind of diet and lifestyle. And um, one of the other reasons why we opt for this is because uh, the treatments that we suggest, suggest to people 
it's economical, easily available, and it works very well. You also include helping them think differently. So you include counseling. That's because right. you can make a person healthy, but then if they go back and continue the way they lived before, yeah. so you include counseling also in your lifestyle center. Very true. Now, that's a very important uh, part of the treatment because, uh, you know, we all have certain habits that that's has right. formed over years. It's very difficult to break, and we have our likes that we cannot change. So we tell them that how important it is to go to God to help them to change what they okay. like. And that's the gospel all about. Gospel is the power of God get, that can change what we like. Right. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's right. That's good. And also you include uh, uh, treatments for things like uh, arthritis, uh, cirrhosis, ulcers, uh, hepatitis. These are all yeah. because there are so many prevalent diseases yeah. that are included yeah. Uh, in, the, in, a, in the medical practice of your, um, or, or the remedies, I should say. Yeah, we, we kind of uh, treat different kinds of cases, as you just mentioned, uh, uh, hepatitis and uh, cancers and arthritis. And um, it's interesting how God has helped these people to come out of their condition. Now, yes, we have seen a lot of miracles happening. Mm -hmm. Now, just because somebody was cured of cancer, we have uh, had patients, fourth stage cancer, getting all right. Hmm. Now, that doesn't mean we have the treatment for cancer. Right. Now, what I believe is, what is the role of a physician? The role of a physician is to take people to the source of healing. Now, okay. God is a source of healing. Now, I like to apply this to myself, like, you know, the person with palsy. Now, he was not able to walk. Palsy, yeah. yeah. Okay. So there were four people who carried him to Jesus. That's right. Brought, uh, brought him through down the roof. through the roof. <laughs> now, we as physicians are the people who carry the patient to Jesus. Oh, okay. So there was a there was certain role those people had to do. They had to get ready with a cloth, with a stick, uh, food preparation for the journey and plan how to, you know, get him to Jesus. To get him to Christ. Because this is the source of healing. So that's our work. Like God has given certain things in our hand. He said natural remedies. He said hydrotherapy. He said all these things. So these are the things that we have to do and say, God, no, you heal. That's right. So he, that's, why, that's why in your practice you have a three-pronged approach. That's true. Physical, mental, and spiritual. Okay, physical, mental, and spiritual. Yeah. Dealing with the things that happen to the body, dealing with the attitude of the mind, and then also bringing them to Jesus. Yeah, uh, it is very important to understand this because unless you are physically strong, you cannot be mentally strong. I tried. Unless you're mentally strong, you cannot be spiritually strong. Very good. Now, which develops first in a, in a, in a, in a newborn baby? First is the physical is to develop. That's and right. then the mental develops, and then the spiritual develops. So, if a person is physically affected, uh, he has uh, maybe a high fever or, uh, you know, some physical uh, condition, you can't say, come, let me teach you something about health. That's right. Just That's leave right. me alone. You know, <laughs> I'm not doing well. So the physical has to be strong for the mental to be strong. When the mental is strong, and then, then the spiritual also can. So, so this is uh, uh, very important and what we emphasize in our program. It's good that, the, you know, we didn't get a lot of time on heart disease today, but that's something we're going to make sure that those who are watching and listening to the program will get the information they need to contact uh, Dr. Enoch Sundaram and uh, to find out more about it. But you also have a, a hydrotherapy. Yeah. You include that also. True. So it's a very well-rounded uh, medical hospital and lifestyle center. True. And I like the word hospital and lifestyle. True. You deal with the medicine when is needed. True. But Very you, true. most of your approach is natural remedies. That's true. Because medicines are scientific, you know, based on science, uh, you know, it's given. But uh, what God is saying, I have a better method. That's right. So it is basically we have to help people to walk to the be better method step by step. It's amazing this information that we talked about today. It's, it's very good news. And I want to let our viewers and our listeners know that the news is very good. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the information that you need, the address that you need to get in touch with uh, Dr. Enoch Sundaram. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then right after that, you're going to listen to a song by um, Ken, Kendall Bacchus, which kind of summarizes the program today. And after that song, we'll come back for uh, on the other side of our news break for some closing thoughts. But the song is entitled, Ain't That Good News? For more information on Dr. Enoch, you may contact him in India. His email address is enochsundaram at gmail.com. That's E-N-O-C-H-S-U-N-D-A-R-A-M at gmail.com. While our time comes and goes so quickly, which is always a challenge here at 3ABN, we want to share more, but we've just whet your appetite today. But Dr. Sundaram, I want you to look at that camera there and kind of encourage those who watch the program and maybe those who are listening on what they can do to make a difference in their lives. Yeah, actually, I mean, if you are suffering from a diabetes or hypertension or heart disease, uh, or for that matter, any kind of health issues, I want to let you know, don't be discouraged. Uh, God is always loving and is always willing to help at any point of time. But God has a way uh, in which we have to travel to receive His grace and healing from Him. So if you're willing to do that, and surely He's willing to help. So uh, if you could uh, find the cause of your problem, as we've just discussed, the cause for diabetes, hypertension, heart disease has to do more with your diet and lifestyle. If you're willing to change, and surely God is willing to help you. Amen. Well, Dr. Sundaram, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it very much. Thank you so and, much. And uh, thank you for at least reminding me also that Jesus has come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Here at 3ABN, we are committed to the everlasting gospel, which includes the health message. So today, begin to make small changes, but don't forget in all the changes, include Jesus Christ in your daily walk. God bless you until we see you again. <laughs>